Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you a full stack Flask app template that will get you set up with everything you need to build a customized Flask app in just a few minutes. This includes authentication, integration with Google Firebase, basic security, user and session management, and sign in and log in with both email and a Google account, as well as password reset. It also provides HTML page templates, navbar and footer, all optimized for mobile, and it's easy to integrate with a database using Google Firestore. This is meant to be a fully customizable template for your app and to get you going within five to 10 minutes. The motivation for building this is that I've created many apps that use Flask on the back end, many of these requiring authentication and databases. Every time I would start a new project, I would have to recreate a lot of this functionality. Sometimes I'd have to relearn things and it would just take time before I could actually get to work on the development of the app. Now with this template, I clone the GitHub repository. I set up the configuration, which takes about five to 10 minutes, and then I'm ready to go. So it's been a real time saver. You can use this as well for your projects. There's a link in the description to the code on GitHub, and I'm gonna walk you through the process of getting it all set up. This is what it looks like here. We're on the home page, so this is a public page that anybody can view. Uh, this has a working navigation bar. Um, it also, it, it, it has a footer and it's optimized for mobile as well. And then of course, it also has authentication and authorization. So you can, you can log in uh, or sign up either with a, an email and password or with your Google account. So I'll just log in here with my Google account and that would bring me here to a protected page, the dashboard. So this is a page that only authenticated users can view. And then the protected pages on the site also have their own nav bar, ability to log out. So as I said, you can sign in, uh, you can sign up with an email or with Google. It also has a password reset as well. So this way, when I'm going to build an application, I just don't have to repeat all of these steps. And I made this I made this to look as generic as possible and as plain as possible so that it can be customized however the developer needs it. And of course you can add more public pages, you can add more protected pages. I have this application up on GitHub for anybody to use and their detailed instructions in terms of how to get it going. It's really simple, but there are a couple steps that need to be followed for the setup on Google Firebase. I'm just gonna walk through how this is done. First thing that we do is clone the repository. Then we can change directories into the folder. Great. The app already has the basic Flask file structure up and ready to go with some existing pages that can be customized and styles. But we're gonna first start off here by walking through the process. So we have to pip install the requirements.txt. And next we have to set up the configuration with Firebase. So first step is to create a Firebase account if you don't have one. I already have one set up, but you can go to firebase.google.com and click get started. I'm gonna to go to my console. I can add a project and we'll give this the project name Flask Demo. And then I click continue. Create project. This will just take a couple of seconds to create. Now the project is ready. Click continue. Then I want to click this button here to add a web app to the project. And I'll just give this the same name, Flask Demo. We're not gonna be hosting, so I don't need to click that. And I register my app. Now we continue to the console. I'm gonna to go to Project Settings. And then I'm gonna scroll down here to Your Apps. And what I wanna get is the, is the SDK Setup and Configuration. I'm gonna click here for config. 
and then I want to copy this information here. So this is going to have the API key for our app as well as other information that is needed to integrate with Firebase. So I'll go back to my code and there's two places that I need to put this. First, I need to put this in the Firebase config.js, which is in the static folder. And I'm just going to go here, const Firebase config, and I can just paste that information in and save it. And I also need to set this up for the backend as well for the flask. So I'm going to go down in the root directory. There's this Firebase config.py. And again, I'm just going to paste that here. Now I also have to make sure because this is Python that I make the adjustment so that it will be valid Python, which is really just putting the quotations around these keys. Once that's done, we can save this file. The next step, if you need it, would be to navigate to the Firestore database section and create the database. You can get there by going back to the console, clicking build, Firestore database, and then following the instructions on how to get started. I'm actually not gonna do that here, set up the database, but it's very easy to do when you actually need it. The next step here is we're gonna go back to the project settings. We're gonna click service accounts, and then we're going to click Python for the SDK configuration, and then generate private key. That's gonna give us a file. We're gonna save that file in the root directory and the name of that file, file is going to be Firebase hyphen off dot JSON. This file is going to contain the private key which is used to interface with your Firebase app. So it's necessary to keep this private. The next step is to set up the appropriate sign-in methods. So we're going to go to build, authentication, get started. And these are the different sign-in methods that you can use for authentication on your app. So you can use email, password, Google, Facebook. There's lots of different options. We're just going to use email password and Google. So we'll start with, we'll start with email password. Just click enable. If you want an email link passwordless sign in, then you would enable here and then click save. Then you'll add a new provider for Google. Enable. And then you just have to provide a support email and save. And then one more thing is within the authentication section, you can press settings and then scroll down to authorize domains. And this is where you would provide any of the domains that will be accessing your app that you'll be authenticating from. So for example, I would need to give it the domain of any site that's hosting my application in order for the authentication to work, particularly with the, with the Google, I think the email would still work. Um, but I don't have any other domains to add right now, so I'll leave that as it is. And that pretty much does it with the Firebase setup. Now I need to add a secret key for my authentication. So I'll create a .env file in my root directory. And then I'll add my secret key. So this can be anything you want. It should be something that's hard to get. This is used for encryption of your authentication data. Usually I really just give it like a large alphanumeric number. It can be anything that you want, but it should be secret. So I'll save this and then this should work. I'll just run the application with Python app.py. So it's on port 5000 and here we go. It seems to work. I'm, I'm on my homepage. Um, let's see if I can log in. 
So I'll just log in with my Google account or set up an account. And this works, I go to my protected page, right? So we'll see what happens if I log out here, it sends me back to login or I can go to the home page. Uh, but we'll see what happens if I try and go to that dashboard page without being logged in, you'll see it just sends me back into the login here. And of course, uh, the password reset, uh, the sign in, the sign up, all of that is there. Um, again, this has the basic Flask file structure all set up. Uh, it has HTML templates set up so you can modify these. Um, it already has styles set up in the styles.css so you can modify the styles to give it a customized look, basically change anything that you want. Um, you can add protected pages, you can add unprotected pages. All of the integration is set up. So just to, just to show you as well um, what it looks like with the, with the authentication. So I had signed up with my account here and I just go to users and I can see that this is, this is my account. And from here I, I can delete or I can add accounts manually as well. Now, the good thing about this is that you don't have to worry so much about password security because Google is essentially handling that and you actually don't have the passwords. So we can see here in the app.py, um, a lot of the security, basic security features are set up, cookie handling, um, how authentication is done. So you have your public routes here. You can add uh, public pages. You can modify them. Um, you have your private routes. You can add as many private pages as you want just with this decorator auth required. And it's basically just a starting point for getting your application going. Okay, that's it. Um, I hope that's been helpful. I hope that this can help people streamline the development process. If anybody has any questions or any comments about this or any suggestions, I would love to hear it. Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.